What's up everybody, Jeremy here from MTGHeadquarters.com and you've stumbled upon another episode of Real Life and Enchantments. And uh, so today, I'm going to be talking about binders. So I think this video more than any of the Real Life Enchantment series, I think I'm looking forward to seeing your guys' response in the comment section down below on what you guys like from binders. But people are always asking, what do I do? How do I roll? Well, this is how I roll. So I use a variety of different binders. Uh, mo most often, uh, I try to divide them into what I'm looking for out of a binder. So I have a lot of cards at home that are in binders and they don't need to travel very often, but it's how I keep a lot of my rares that maybe I'm not trading. Um, or if I'm trying to complete a set or a foil set, I like to keep it in a binder and in pages so I can get at things that I need quickly, uh, specifically cards that are in standard. So if you have a large collection of cards and you just want to store it all in as few different places as possible, uh, I recommend using these types of binders. This, I, I will admit, I sprung a little bit more for the one that said Magic the Gathering, but it's really no different than any other D-ring binder that you can get from an office supply store. So I think a lot of people are just fine doing that. And I think if you are absolutely, uh, if you are absolutely concerned about getting the absolute cheapest binder, I'll put a link in the description below to like a budget option that I've had okay luck with. This option is about 10, 12 bucks, or I think it's 12, but you can get, if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's free shipping. Um, and it's worked great for me. I mean, it's not super well built, uh, but it stores tons of cards, hundreds of pages. Um, I don't know if they actually will tell you, uh, but I've had these like packed, you know, and then they come with a very simple label. You just flip it over and then you can write what it is and then you put it right on your shelf for storage. Uh, that is my most often used type of binder. Uh, like I said, this is a standard Ultra Pro, I'll put the link in the description below, uh, D-Ring Binder. If you just want to store all your stuff in one place and you're not going to carry it around, I think this type of binder is perfect for you. And at the price point, who could complain? Then when I'm talking about taking cards that I want to travel with, for example, um, or maybe if I'm going to a GP or I'm going to... Um, some event and I want to bring a trade binder. There's two types of binders that I've used in the past and I think there are channels out there that do good jobs like breaking down the absolute like specifics for you engineers out there uh, who want to know every little thing about the stuff. I just don't roll like that. I'm not saying that's you know hey do you uh, but I've used two different kinds of binders and they really kind of come in around the same uh, utility for me. One of the most popular types is this monster binder. Uh, this is a uh, monster. They've even got like newer designs where they have like theft, theft deterrent pages and all sorts of stuff. Um, you have your standard, uh, you know, 360 card total capacity, 20 pages with nine pockets per page. So it's like 18 pages um, or 18 cards per page, front and back. And this is their uh, limited edition. Uh, white binder but let's let's go ahead and just open it up here my biggest complaint about uh, the biggest knock for me for monster binders is their price point i mean 20 to 30 dollars plus for a binder to me is you know bananas however if you have a nice trade binder that you want to bring to your fnm and you don't want to bring those huge binders uh, monster binders hold up well. Again, they still have that, like, you know, f this is not much protection. Now, obviously, it doesn't protect your cards if you drop them. So you still need to treat this this book with your cards in it like it's a wallet full of that much cash. So you don't leave it laying around. You don't toss it. You take good care of it. And I find these pages hold up well. I do like the side loads. It just makes getting cards in and out a lot easier. Um, but again, this is a $30 binder and this is like a higher end. I think um, if you have like a higher end trade binder that you towed around and you want to roll like a gangster with this nice monster binder, um, I think 
you know, this is kind of like their standard offering is really, this one's really good. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. The binder I've got more mileage out of is the standard Ultra Pro binders. Now I think Ultra Pro isn't trying to fool anybody, or at least we all know that it's not like, it's Ultra Pro, right? I mean, it's not like it's some superior quality, but what they offer you is decent quality at a fair price. Uh, there's a couple of features of this binder, which I'll link below too, that I have all different colors. This time, I think green was the only one I didn't have when I was checking out Amazon, so I had to get that. I love that it's got this built in. I don't know how long this lasts for all of you. Um, I'm not super careful with my binder, so it doesn't last forever, but once I break it, I just cut it out and it's really no big deal. But it's kind of nice to have that. And then here you've got basically the exact same layout, right? I think these pages are a little looser than what you're gonna find in a monster binder. And the monster binder, I think, will in general be a little bit better quality. But again, the Ultra Pro binder is offering you a uh, similar capacity and totability, but it's you know a little bit cheaper. Maybe you don't wanna spend $30 on your binder, right? Um, and these Pro binders are great for just, you know, Bam, it's closed, it's, you know, your stuff's not hanging out. Uh, you could pretty much get everything, uh, you know, in there. You got 360 cards, so I don't know how big of a trade binder you guys want to tote around, but if you want more, then you end up going to something, either multiples of these types of things, which you might have 60, 60 to $100 in binders you're toting around, so you gotta keep an eye on that. But um, you could also go to something like this, but again, um, they get jostled around and cards can fall out the top of them. Um, and with a monster, uh, the monster protector and the Ultra Pro Pro binders, I think are really good. And I think there is some variance. And as you can see, these pages just look a little upper crusty. You know, they're just a little bit nicer. And if you've got a really nice trade binder and you want to present it really well, I think you go with the Monster Binder. It's hard to argue with that. If you just want something that's totable, that you could take your f and M, I I like the Ultra Pro Pro Binder. And then if you have a collection at home or you don't trade all that often or you don't have a huge collection, I like these standard D-Ring Binders, which all three items are linked in the description below. Uh, you know, anywhere from 10 to $30 by the time you're all said and done. But you just have to decide what do you want out of your binder and then just pick the right one for you, right? Um, I kinda, you can kinda self-select or get one of each. Maybe you have one, want one at home, one for the road. I think this cross-section of binders should have you covered. I'm interested to hear what you all have to say about your binder selection um, and some of the pros and cons that you've seen and I'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below. But these are three options. These are three options I use most often and um, I think that should help you make your buying decision. Real Life Enchantments continues every other week. We've got all new stuff coming up, some dice bags, some just some cool stuff loaded up for you guys. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Please remember to crush that thumbs up button and we'll talk to you again real soon. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, check out some of our most popular playlists from MTG Vlogs, sick gameplay videos, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. I upload three to four new Magic the Gathering videos every week, so if you haven't already, please take a moment to crush that subscribe button to join one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channels on YouTube. Talk to you later.